Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Collect, Epistle and Gospel for All Saints' Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This epistle is taken from the first letter of St. John, chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, beginning to read at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, 
and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and I believe in the Holy Ghost the Lord and giver of life who proceedeth from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak and may we hear in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do sit down, please. Only a few seconds ago, we have together declared our belief in the communion of saints. This is fine because we're doing what generations before us have done in this place and in thousands and thousands of places of worship across the world. We are expressing our faith using the words of the creed. What are we saying when we come to that part of our statement of belief? It certainly has a rather warm, comforting feel to it, doesn't it? We believe in the communion of saints, almost a mysterious feel. What are we saying? Today's theme of all saints is one that presents to us a number of questions. It begs the question, what is a saint? It encourages us to ask, who are the saints? It raises the question, what does it mean to be part of the communion of saints? We can't answer all of those questions this morning. We can't answer them all even in a day. But perhaps what I can do is offer you some thoughts, some starters, some prompts to focus your thinking. In Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, part of which we heard a moment ago, Jesus gives us a summary of the characteristics of those who are close to God. We read there that it's the poor, the hungry, those who weep, those who are hated, reviled and excluded. They are the blessed ones. And Jesus was turning the world on its head with that message. Though that list provides what might be thought of as a set of unattractive features, what Jesus is saying to us is that if we are poor, we can be blessed with a deeper insight into the priorities of God. If we are weeping, we can be blessed with membership of the fellowship of suffering, developing empathy for others who weep, and notably our Lord himself. If we are hated because we stand up for justice and defend the oppressed, then we can be blessed by the company that we're keeping, the prophets and the martyrs who have gone before us. Now it's to state the obvious that we can't all literally be poor, we can't all literally be weepers, oppressed and so on. The key element here though is that we can stand with those who weep. We stand with those who are poor, we are oppressed. Not giving them our pity, but our solidarity. As we stand by them, hoping to catch something of a glimpse of the kingdom of God. And then there is your definition of a saint. What is a saint? I'm sure you've heard the very simple working definition before, that a saint is a holy one. And the attitude of growing closer to God through everything is central to a life of holiness. A saint need not wait for the agreement of a Vatican Council a saint doesn't only reside in a stained glass window. A saint is one who simply through his or her lifestyle seeks to align that with the way of God. That way shown to us in Jesus Christ. Not for his or her own satisfaction, but that life may reflect more clearly the light of Christ in his world. In short, a saint should be you and it should be me. One of the many things, many, one of the things that many people find difficult is to see their actions in terms of what has gone before and what will come. We live in an age in which people search for their moment of fame in the 
here and now, perhaps not linking it with anything else. In consequence, moments of fame quickly die and the world's attention moves on to something else. But that isn't the way with the people of God. It isn't the way with the communion of saints. For God has worked in and through his church for generation after generation, using the gifts of one generation of saints to provide for the next, that generation built on the past and so on and so forth. It's the theme of whatever way we celebrate the 150th anniversary of the consecration of this building in 2021. Thanking God for the vision of those who have gone before us and praying God that we leave a legacy for those who will come after us. And of course the activities of the Christian church in this generation are important but these activities are good because we build on the past. And because we build foundations for the future. And the communion of saints is that band of people through the ages, the church militant and the church triumphant, in which we play our part. Not for our own sake, not just for the sake of the, of the church in this generation, but for the good of the kingdom of God. I'm happy to be a saint, given the biblical guidelines for, for a saint's life. And when I eventually, when the day comes that I retire from Bolton Parish Church, please don't do to me what happened to one of my predecessors in a former parish. And people meant very well by this. They made a stained glass window in the church, depicting one of the parables, the parable of the saw. And in the face of the saw, they had a picture of the vicar's face. I wouldn't want to wish on subsequent generations my face glaring down from any of these lovely stained glass windows of ours. And I'm sure no one will do that. And that's not my idea of saint, but well-meaning, though that gesture was. I want to be a saint now. I want to be a saint here with you as my fellow saints. I want us, I want us together in this church to be a piece in the picture that is God's picture of the communion of saints. I want to know day by day that we are known as a community marked by our readiness to stand alongside others so that Christ may say of us, as he said in his Sermon on the Mount, blessed are you. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here and now. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our arms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that we, all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. 
beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever, hereafter, serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. 
who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God, that has taken us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that has taken us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that has taken us away the sins of the world, grant us thy Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and to do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, 
art most high, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore.